All right, so the reason we're here and the reason I'm gonna to pretend to be a YouTuber is I'm trying to solve a problem that I created myself. And even though YouTube's a great resource, I haven't seen anybody else talking about this. So there's gotta be somebody else out there like me that uh, picked up that 24 to 105 2.8, possibly for an R5C and can't find any way to balance it. Insert the DJI RS4 Pro that I just picked up that hopefully is going to solve a problem that admittedly I created myself. So, like I said, attempting to be a YouTuber, uh, I'm going to unbox it, set it up, and in real time, we're gonna find out if I've made two mistakes. Open this guy up and start this process. Oh, this is the moment of truth. I've legitimately had anxiety about this because I'm like, that new lens is amazing, but it is kind of a beast. I feel like I honestly, I feel like I tried to balance uh, the 7200 on a gimbal. Not that you would really ever do that, but I tried to balance it on it before and it was, I think it did it. But that new 24 to 105, it did not like it on the RS2. Oh, here we go. That looks nice. Smells new. Boom. Let this guy up. Boom. The gimbal itself. I think, I think this battery grips the exact same as the original one. Well, the original one to me. I should charge it up. No, that doesn't matter. We don't need a battery to make sure to balance. There's the camera. That's the legs. I'm just gonna power through this and it's just gonna be straight great news. I know it. Boom, ba boom. So the good thing is a lot of this all looks really familiar. It all looks is super familiar. Well, at least I don't like to read instructions. Who likes to do that? Let's compare the two of them. Let's see the size difference of these guys here. Boom. So. The James Franco said, same, same. I think that guy's a little bigger. We're gonna go with it's a little bigger. But the reason I got it is for these longer arms. And yeah, that goes back quite a bit more. Oh yeah, that's like maxed out over here. This guy is like compact for uh, like travel. All right. Basically right now just stalling because like I said, anxiety, want this to work and not just be Super cool looking. All right. Ooh, there's like a weight. I don't wanna say like a weight to it cause that sounds negative, but it feels very good. Let's see. We're seeing an immediate difference between these two guys. I'd say she's a little taller. Yes, all right. Same, same. All right, and now we're gonna have to switch over from my R5C to the R7 on there because I have to mount that or balance it, attempt to balance it. Pray for me. All right, so I failed. I actually had to read instructions because some of this stuff looks pretty new. Um, initially, I was thinking I was gonna have to use this, um, this plate because I thought the camera had to sit so far back because that was the issue with the RS2. It couldn't get far enough back. And then when it did, it was hitting this back motor here. But I think this is gonna work. So this plate looks super familiar to anybody that's ever used an RS2 or any other gimbal. Slides right in here. Make sure this is switched to the unlock position. Slides right here. We'll just kind of set it like halfway back like that. You pull this lever forward and lock it. So then what we need is this camera right here. 
which I kind of cheated and already put this on, but I can show you guys again, because if I had to look it up, that means there's probably somebody else that has to. So literally you're just getting this little mounting plate. You're adding the little screw on here that you probably can't see, but it comes in one of these small bags here. Thread that through. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. It's got this little arm that kind of pops out and then it'll like kind of add, I, I don't know, some more stability to your camera. So we pop that under here. It's really easy to see which one it goes on because uh, this is always like threaded and unthreaded on my the bottom of my small rig cage. So it's got like a nice little scuff there. And then we tighten it. We slide that down. Well, you, you slide that down and then you tighten it. Like I said, in real time, figuring stuff out. Tighten it pretty good. That's cool because then that won't allow it to twist as much because that was one thing that would be a problem going from handheld to the gimbal. This guy would twist and then you'd have a camera mounted here, uh, balanced here, and then it'd get here and it'd just kind of throw it off. So uh, getting rid of that's pretty awesome. Slide this guy right into this plate. Lock this. So this is as far as I made it without you guys. So back on completely uncharted territory again. Now this, the way that's sitting to me, let's see my face. The way that's sitting to me looks like this is already gonna do a really great job. So feeling a little less nervous. So really quickly, we're going to attempt to adjust that or balance this. So we're gonna unlock it, very top heavy right off the bat, but we have a decent amount of room, kind of feeling nervous again. All that confidence, semi gone. But look, there's a ton of room back there. We can go this far back. And oh my God, what a great moment to see that this can actually go far enough back to be back heavy, which was never going to be a thing for the RS2. So now, oh, this is gonna work. This is gonna work. I'm no longer an idiot. I'm the smartest man alive. All right, so. Let me just go back and forth with this little balancing game. Amazing, that's pretty much locked on. I don't know if you guys have ever balanced a gimbal and then here it has changed. I swear sometimes you will find, especially if it's during a wedding, I always balance this beforehand and then I kind of pack it down as much as I can. Uh, sometimes depending on the setup, you're not able to com compact it down with it balanced, but I like to have it pretty close because there's, even though I give myself a ton of room for weddings, uh, like buffers and like just a whole bunch of extra fluff time, I, I call it. Um, the few times I've tried to like run and gun and like just really quickly balance a gimbal, it's very difficult to do the simplest task if you're stressed out. So um, I remember this used to take me forever to do. Um, so yeah, this tilting back a little, so we'll just unlock it, move it forward. The reason I say that is because I feel the pressure of all 126 of my followers. Uh, watching me do this so I have to do it right and fast even in the magic editing you guys will see the jump cuts so it's almost there and I also do like a little cheat code too I um on my RS2 on the side here I have it marked off uh with a little like red sharpie so it fits right in there and then I just no need to uh, adjust it. So we're good right there. So let's flip that back. And then like, like I said, look at that. Doesn't, ooh, it is, it is hitting a little, but I don't really shoot uh, straight up and down. So that is pretty good. We'll adjust that back here. So now we're gonna adjust the top. I'm gonna stand up, my head's gonna get cut off, but that's fine. Nobody's wanting to see my head anyways. Let's see, slide this guy down. Slide this guy down. Oh, this is gonna work so good. I am pumped. Boom, there we go. So that guy is good. And then the amazing thing about this damn lens, the amazing thing about this lens is the fact that it's internal, internal zoom, uh, leads me to believe that it's gonna be more balanced more often, or it's gonna be easier to stay balanced. Cause a lot of times with my 24 to 70 that I was using, I would balance it at like 35 or 40, 40 ish millimeters. Um, and you, anytime you go like wide or, or, or tight, it gets, it gets thrown off a of whack and you could see that with the motors. So now we have to rebalance that. 
So we're leaning back, so let's bring it forward. That is amazing that this is leaning back. I should show you guys how bad this wasn't working out with the uh, RS2. So then that's, that's pretty damn good right there. So we're going to lock that off. Now, I always flip this out because even though I will have an external monitor some way set up, I'll have this out because like I said, every little thing will throw that off. This little monitor being out there will throw that weight outside a little bit. Let's take a look for the first time in real time, this new Teflon coating. Let's see if it's as amazing and buttery smooth as possible. So far, I'm not seeing how smooth it is because it's on the unlock position and it's not sliding. So, oh, there you go. It just took some force. I was thinking it was just gonna glide, glide like butter, but it didn't. So, let's, all these locks are like in slightly different places. So, I'm not as dumb as this seems. Slide that like that. I need to shift this guy over here. I truly have to be doing that wrong because this guy is taking some force to adjust. There we go. All right, so we're close. I wish this had like a, a better way to micro adjust. That's probably like that Teflon coating that I'm not really feeling. There you go again. I'm gonna stand up for this. Ooh, that's, I'm gonna go with that's good. So then we will lock this guy off. And this one to me is always the one that I like hate the most to adjust. So boom, very front heavy. So we gotta slide this guy back. Let's take a look at that. Oh, I thought I just like one, one hitter quittered it. One shot at it. That's pretty good. All right, so now what we're gonna do, uh, we're going to experience this again. The, the, the phrase of this, the caption of this video is going to be in real time. We're going to power this guy up and we're going to see that uh, auto unlock, assuming this doesn't need a charge, which it looks like it needs a charge. So we're going to charge this up. I, it's balanced. This is amazing. So R5C. 24 to 105 f 2.8 on the dji rs4 pro combo so far i mean these motors the, the issue wasn't the motor the issue was it just had too small of a body to to fit a bigger camera body we're like golden this is amazing so i'm going to charge this up and we'll be right back in the magic of my editing brb Ooh, unlocking look at that let's Start calibration. I cannot believe this is gonna work. I uh, truly was nervous. Calibration is complete. Let's flip this out. Why did that just do that? So, we feel, feeling good. Looking good. Feeling good. Let's see if does it have selfie mode engaged? This is by far my least favorite mode. One, two, three. Uh, this gives you anxiety. There's nothing more like funnier than being like a hypocrite and being like, just act natural in front of the camera. And uh, like when I'm shooting a wedding and then I accidentally hit this button three times and then it just points at me and I'm like, ugh, get off me. One, two, three. She doesn't want to turn around. She just loves me. That's what it is. There we go. So, this is incredible, guys. It's gonna work. So the title of this video is going to be, will it balance, probably? And the answer is yes, it will balance well. This is freaking awesome. This lens is beautiful. This gimbal so far, I'm sure is amazing because the RS2, there was, I, I wouldn't have never upgraded other than um, it was two years old and shot probably like a hundred weddings on it and it was starting to show its age. Um, feels like a, like, a, like a little loose and stuff. I probably should send it in and have it like recalibrated or like tightened up or tuned up if that's even a thing. Um, but yeah, this is freaking awesome. Um, 
uh, one like cheat code I'll show you guys. If you guys are watching this because of the R5C specifically, not just because of uh, the DJI RS4, just to see that, because there's gonna be way better videos of like in depth of the RS4 Pro. But if you guys are watching this because you have an R5C and you got this lens because it's gorgeous and you're like, holy hell, this won't work. Um, this so like I'll apply to you is, uh, like I said, I was gonna, st I'll just steal the credit for it. I cannot remember who came up with this, but I just have a cheap power bank. I could probably like list it in the description um, until I recently got like the V-mount batteries. Until recently when I got the V-mount batteries, I was straight rocking this all the time because love that camera, love the waveform, love like the cinema, the cinema features in the video form, but the battery life is freaking awful. So instead of having to swap out and pop the battery out of here every 30 minutes to an hour, I have this right on the bottom here. It actually adds some weight here. So in a situation like this, I would do the same thing. I am going to end up like taping it under this plate, but I've got the double-sided uh, Velcro under here for like picture frames. And then I have just gaffers tape around it. So then, with this battery pack and this the battery of my rs2 this would last the entire day shooting a wedding um, obviously i didn't shoot the entire day with a gimbal but the gimbal portion of the wedding this would last the whole day so i will definitely do this for here because though i can balance this and that's awesome as is this is going to last me 40 minutes i'm not feeding batteries in this thing like a machine gun that's just eating through them so one Huge problem solved. Another problem remains, which I'm confident we'll, I'll be able to fix. So uh, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. I am gonna go out and start shooting with this so I could include some sample footage of this, but it's just probably gonna be like buttery smooth, beautiful stuff. Um, so yeah, I guess this is the point where they say like, uh, if you like this, uh, if this was helpful, like and subscribe. Um, my wife and I are starting a podcast. We have one episode of that out. Uh, we're opening a wedding venue and cocktail lounge. So if you want to watch us stumble through that, um, yeah, just check us out. If not, thanks for seeing this, if you've made it this far. All right, see you guys.